everyone. Welcome back to Boys on Film, where we cast our critical eyes over the latest movies and TV shows. We just started the BFI London Film Festival run. Get out of my way. Literally. <laughs> exactly. <out> of my <laughs> We're running through with a lanyard. <laughs> Don't get me started on the lanyards. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you? I'm in the house moving, although from behind me you can't see it. I mean, on the TV, it's really hilarious. I realised that it's paused on a bog roll. <laughs> which is when I paused my TV earlier. So I'm just gonna Always classy. That. Keep it classy. That's actually some high-end artwork. It's an energy. Yeah, no, good. Really good. Yeah, moving house, which is, you know, breezy and easy as always. <laughs> but in between all of that, we're obviously swishing down to the um, South Bank and seeing some great stuff and got lots to talk about, some great documentaries and a few bits today, right, Phil? Yeah, we did swish when we saw Lynch Oz, which is forthcoming, so we will be reviewing that. So today it's Brainwashed Sex Camera Power, a very enticing title. It's directed by Nina Menkes. It stars, I say stars, it features Rosanna Arquette and Julie Dash. Tell us about this, because I haven't seen this. This was in the first few days, wasn't it, the press screenings? It was. So really, it's an examination of the male gaze and how 90 plus percent of films are created through the male gaze it's absolutely enlightening it really talks about how films are shot the idea of the object and the subject and it was it was really quite amazing really because you don't it's one of those things that i think because we've grown up with a certain way that films are viewed and seen it's almost subconscious, but it was just a really fascinating and important bit of um, documentary making really about how women are perceived in films. You don't really think about it too much, but it's there. And, when, and once you know, you can't unsee it. It was really interesting as well, about, as well about how they talked about, and we'll get into this, really famous films that have been lauded and saying, oh, this is a cinematic triumph. Um, but actually, when you watch it, it's entirely through the male gaze. Um, and so I'll give you some examples. We'll talk a little bit about it, you know. Often when uh, in a film, the camera pans to a woman, it like segments her. So you'll see a little bit of her body or you'll see a little bit and it's seductive and it's almost two dimensional. Um, whereas you see a man in a film and he's a whole figure. So there's lots of ideas around how women are perceived in movies. And there's a really great bit around how it talks to the fact that, you know, the director is obviously of, of often a man the sound producer is often a man the producer is often a man they're creating it for a male audience uh, and they're viewing a woman um and so it was it, i thought it was absolutely brilliant and a real eye-opener um for someone who's watches a lot of films like you and i feel yeah um and how how really we have become completely sanitized to this um but it's there it's in plain sight it's a great um, concept for documentary as well because you instantly think, oh, is it just about female and male directors? Because obviously it's not just about the, the direction, it's it's about the whole filmmaking process. Like you say, it's how women are perceived on the screen. Because when you think about it, particularly with films in the 70s and 80s, even 90s as well, you, you never really see men unclothed either. And it's always that kind of you know women on the screen it's that seductive element and and sometimes you know soft pull element as well which you don't really see with men either so when you flip that it does make you realize how how it's kind of it's not very equal at all of course and you know i think there were some amazing statistics around the number of people that come out of film school which is probably 50 50 um across the gender bias and then how many female directors and people in the industry actually end up making films and it's like five or six percent yeah so really nuts um and they give some really good examples and i would recommend to watch it around how sometimes these things are flipped and how a lot of female directors are trying to change the narrative within films um but you're right often if you're a man and you're naked the the, the camera will show you as a whole in a very three-dimensional way and often as i say as a female they're showing you in a very flat soft focus and a section of how you are perceived it's really interesting i'll tell you what i tell, what, what struck me was we watched a film for lff in 2021 called the taking which explored the visual language of monument valley and that was about how the setting of monument valley stood and st stood for something and, and the place making made the film now this is entirely different it's a parallel topic but it made me think about how we perceive films today 
and what the setting, how it's framed comes through. And a lot of it is, as I say, subconscious because we have been conditioned by it through the entire process of filmmaking. So the taking, it really made me think about the taking that we watched, but it is obviously very different, but it really is the context of filmmaking. So for me, I thought it was great. I really love this documentary because it really got under the hood of what we see and feel every day, but don't necessarily think about. And also when you think of the horror genre specifically as well, women have often been seen as the victim, like the final girl. And men have been seen as quite powerful, whether that's because they're, you know, women are being threatened by men or because men are taking the power financially as well and like in their in their work. So, you know, hopefully things are starting to change. I'd like to think that over the last few years with, you know, really interesting filmmakers, especially like Greta Gerwig and so, I mean, last year particularly, some of my favourite films have been female directors. So I'd like to think that, you know, the female filmmakers are being more prominent now um, yeah. in the industry. But I mean, you look at how amb- ambitious this film seems to be. Over 175 films were used, weren't they, when they were um, digging into into examples of, of this. It's, it's really rich as a documentary. It's really rich around the context and the content of, of what since the beginning of filmmaking, since, it, since the talk is really. And I, and I love to give some really fantastic examples of how things could be done, like how a camera can be framed and how individuals can be framed to still get the same impact, but without it falling into this kind of trope around um, you know, the, the woman being the object. Yeah, the whole thing is kind of rigged. <laughs> unfortunately, for uh, what is primarily a a set of men creating a a film for a primarily male audience where the woman is the object. It's it's a brilliant bit of documentary making. It's fantastic. It's got some brilliant talking heads. Laura Mulvey's in there, who is a a British feminist. There's some really great bits around that. Um, And Laura Mulvey was the person that came up with male gaze, in inverted commas around the term male gaze, which now still exists within filmmaking. And she talks in the documentary really around the principles of why she came up with these five or five or six rules around what it means, the term male gaze. So fantastic bit of documentary making. And hopefully a lot of men will see this documentary as well. Agreed. Tipsy my cat, is having a full on, like, I agree as a <laughs> cat by the female, just going, I agree. <laughs> Even like that's in films you just don't get the space apologies viewers and listeners if you can hear tipsy really go <laughs> so final <laughs> verdict for brainwashed sex camera power brilliant I mean, title as well four stars wow i really enjoyed it and for me i thought it was educational it wasn't patronizing i think it had it took up a space that's needed uh, i think it's important i do hope a lot of people across a cross-section of people watch this documentary. I do worry that it may appeal to people who get the get the subject matter. So other female directors and, I don't know, gay men and people who are queer. I don't know. But it, I think everyone should watch this because it is really, really important and really powerful. And it's so well put together. As you say, the reference, reference data and information behind it is really, really fantastic. And it also features the lead in Desperately Seeking Susan. I mean, if that's not a reason to watch it, what, what else is, quite frankly? That's the gayest thing you've said today, Phil. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I bow out. <laughs> no, I slip off screen. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> so thank you Sean as always always a pleasure never a chore thank you everybody for watching don't forget to like and subscribe we've got plenty more uh, reviews of films in the programme this year for the BFI London Film Festival so let us know if you're going to the festival the films that you've seen if you've seen this film that Sean's reviewed today and we'll see you on the on the next one and don't forget to check out the playlist which is on the screen now next to Sean's head I think somewhere <laughs> <laughs>